اعوذبلرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي ريسبكتيد ويورز اند لسنرز السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ذا ورس ويتش اي هاف ريسايتد از فروم سوره الصف شابتر 61 ورس نمبر 9 It says, "Who will the Zee Arsala Rasulahu bil Huda? It is He who sends down His messengers with guidance, with the Inil Hak, with the religion of truth. Lo yus zahira hu ala Dine kullihi, the truth which will bulldoze all other isms. Walla u kari hal mushrikoon. How much the mushrikin or the disbelievers detest it." chapter 61 verse number 9 in another verses allah also men, uh, mention walau karihal kafirun walau karihal mushrikun wa kafa billahi shahida and allah is enough to witness to this fact that this religion will prevail and bulldoze everything every ideology <clears throat> today the topic is about hypocrisy or hypocrisy You see in Islam we have two kinds of hypocrisies number 1 it is batin and number 2 zahir batin means something hidden inside your heart and zahir which is apparent you cannot hide it from batin this kind of hypocrisy is very hard to know to recognize why because this is the matter of the prophet at his time to recognize that who is a real hypocrite because allah reveals to his prophet or rather prophets and tell them that this guy in your community in your midst is a hypocrite but after the finishing of all this revelation as prophet muhammad peace be upon him is the last prophet now we cannot say as certain that this person is hypocrite we cannot so first category of hypocrisy is that you do not believe in the person but in your actions you support him which is the most dangerous concept four types of enemies were with prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam kuffar e makkah munafiq e madina jews and christians all these four they were grouping together to hurt or harm prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam amongst them allah says the worst of all were the hypocrites of madina worse than disbelievers of makkah why because they on the face of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they support him but at the back they were stabbing him worst of all so allah says in surah an-nisa chapter 4 verse 135 that munafiqin or munafiq will be burnt in the lowest depth of the hell fire they will be not they will be not be forgiven they will not be forgiven at any cost This is Munafiq e Madina. This type of hypocrisy you cannot find now or identify them. With that is why we have the worst of scenarios everywhere because we do not know that this guy is honest with us or not. So this number one category, let keep this aside. Allah will judge on your Mul Qiyama. The second one. is intellectual hypocrisy or apparent hypocrisy which we are doing now which is recognizable for example you believe in something but you don't do it you see everywhere injustices you close your eyes you say something from your mouth but you do not follow it hypocrisy and this is the worst punishment from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
from surah at tauba chapter 9 verse number 75 to 79 this is the lecture about that why have we become hypocrites look at our country pakistan for example because we have to give some model we have to discuss about one particular model and this model is the fittest of all why two nations in this century they were made on the proclamation of their doctrines number one the state of israel theodor herz he postulated proposed the theory of going back to palestine their holy land gifted in the book of genesis to them inverted commas which is not a topic you can refer to one of my videos where i discuss that this whole land belongs to who the children of ishmael or children of isaac you can see there in that video but now so anyhow they persuaded they but they brought this rothschild family into it balfour De declaration the second they got this independent land whatsoever so they got this palestine back but what was their uh, cornerstone what was their founding or rock foundation it was that we will follow the system of torah we will follow whatever is applicable from it and this is the gifted or promised land of course it was a religious connotation and they got it and tel aviv they make their central power slowly slowly an accession happened and you know what is happening now whole of the thing has been occupied so far so good 1948 balfour declaration israel became the independent state one year before 1947 there was another land pakistan and i am proud to be of that we cannot live with hindus we need a separate land elam akbal two nation theory hindus are different people and of course we can see now we can see that if qaid e azam which we call muhammad ali jinnah the founder of pakistan had it not been for him to make a u turn on shimla conference there wouldn't be pakistan existing you know that why because nehru pandit nehru at the time of this conference he said that let us get a freedom from british people british raj and then after that you know we will discuss something and then after that 10 years later you can get a separation from us but let us be unified in this matter and later on somehow muhammad ali jinnah came to know the statement of pandit nehru he said that once we get this independence from british raj then we will see who will get separated in future we will see later and for this evil intention of his muhammad ali jinnah made a u turn he said if this is your intention sir sorry to say we will not accept the shimla conference and the conference was ended imagine that if this conference was succeeded india is not ready to give you one chunk of kashmir imagine they were giving you whole of the chunk as a separate nation pakistan you see in reality these are not the way we will see these are not like this this is not like this the way we see it so foresighted this this uh, nazar which you can see far muhammad ali jinnah knew it and elama iqbal all this postulated proposed and alhamdulillah we got independence from british radcliffe played a vital role in his hypocrisy by dividing uh, this east and west pakistan and in the middle they put the big danger this whole weapon of atomic bomb in the middle india played a great role with raw agencies and made all these seeds of uh, dissenting seeds of separation and we got separated fine that's another topic once we get separated what was our main notion our cornerstone what was it pakistan ka matlab kya la ilaha illallah the meaning of pakistan's identity is that there is no god except allah 
and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the last and the final messenger and prophet of Allah. This was our cornerstone, our slogan, our emblem. This was our main slogan. And what did we do after that? Objective resolution was passed 1930. And that was what? Ali Khan. Objective resolution, the constitution of Pakistan. Nothing must be done to the repugnant of the Holy Quran and Sunnah. Anything which you dislike in Islam cannot be accepted in Pakistan. This was what we supposed to do. What happened after that? Allah says in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 75, Allah says, When these people come to me and say and made a covenant that, Oh Allah, give us re this respite. Give us this opportunity to make a land of Tawheed for you and remove us our miseries, remove our miseries and ordealments from these evil mongers, these tyrants who are ruling us, of course, those British and India, those days, give us a free land, O oh Allah. We will do everything according to Quran and Sunnah. We will not deceive you. We will not flim flam you. We will not hoodwink you. We will do whatever we supposed to do. That supreme sovereignty belongs to Allah alone. You know, I still remember when I was in grade 11 or 12, or nine or ten like these ages we have Pak study, studies in our curriculum of schools Pakistan studies compulsory even in universities even when you are in a having Islamabad board of education you see in that Pak studies in every year the first question was the most important question sovereignty the sovereignty belongs to Allah and the topic was the, the sovereignty of Pakistan. The first chapter, every student cannot pass the Pak studies exam without clinching the deal of this first question. And what was the first statement? I remembered very vividly. The sovereignty belongs to Allah alone. This was written in that question's answer. So, it's very clear. Our base is then our passport. Alhamdulillah, it says the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. I'm proud of it. Then on the first page, on the, sorry, the second page after your identification, it says that we are not allowed to enter the state of Israel. Alhamdulillah. Can you believe it? One Israel nation came and Pakistan came, a strong opposition, and they wrote it. Pakistan wrote it that Israel, we are not supposed to enter there and neither they are welcome in our country. Alhamdulillah, it says salute to the people who made this law into the passports. I salute them. So, we promised Allah, Allah, we will do this. Allah gave us free land. Do you have any idea how much suffering those Indians are having in India? Those Muslims, Indians? You have no idea. They are so much terrified, petrified. The corrupt Muslim over there, the rulers over there, under their umbrella, everything is okay. But a true practicing Muslim, he has been suffering in that country, especially with this RSS ideology of that, this guy. The one I don't want to take his name. I don't like to take his name. He is promoting. The one who got rid of Gandhi, their own leader himself. So those people are ideologies, which is just like Nazi party. And now they are doing this to the Muslims. Ask them that, how are you doing? Ask them, what are you feeling? Every day they are petrified. They are terrified of uncertainties, unprecedented situations. Anything can come in the morning and take us. Imagine we have a free land. Allah gave us free land. Please understand this. Value the country. Please, for God's sake, value the country, our country. We have everything in our land. We, have, we can make that land into tourism. We can make that land utilize into halal things, so many things. We have potential. We have power. Our inner core is Quran. We have ulamas. We have clerics. We have knowledge. We have power. We have science. Our students are brilliant in the world. 
Our people are brilliant in the world. We have brilliant minds. Our intelligentsia is the top of the world, one of the top, a top of the world. Our intelligentsia is one of the brilliant intelligentsia we have. If you compare to the rest of the world, please think about this land. Imagine why are we suffering from duplicity of these ideologies? Why are we suffering? Because we are under the punishment of Allah. Why? Once we promised, after that, what did we do? In the second verse, Allah says, and then in chapter 9, verse 75, Allah says, you come to me and then you ask for the land. We put Tawheed and everything. Once I give you, in verse 76, Allah says, then you turn your faces. You break the promise or you broke the promise. Allah says, then in return, I punish them with nifaq. This word comes from nafaqa. In the old days, kings and premiers, they used to have a scape area. And that scape area should be like, suppose like tunnels. When one uh, uh, gate is closed, they have two faces of tunnels. So they go to another place. This is what you call nifaq, meaning two, one area, two places to go out. Two faces, a person with two faces or animal with two faces, a snake with two faces or a chamber with two exits. Nifaq. Allah says, then I strict you or struck you with nifaq, hypocrisy. This is the ayah I'm quoting, not my words. And Allah says, then khuf and all those declining in Surah Tawbah. This exactly what happened to us. We are under the disease of intellectual hypocrisy, cognitive dissonance intellectual paralysis, ambivalence, dichotomy, confusion, in haze. And these all things we are having a flume, a clouds of all these things covering us, overshadowing us. And we are looking here and there for justice, for peace, for money, for help. Because we indulge ourselves into punishment of nifaq. We should make a collective repenting. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ask the forgiveness. He is Rahim or Rahman. Wala taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not get despondent from the mercy of Allah. We should do something now. We should ask forgiveness. Oh Allah forgive us. We lied to you. Whosoever is responsible in the statecraft. We all should do repenting. From lower level to higher level, you see what's happening in Pakistan. It's not nothing new there. And everybody wants to make a cordial relationship with a fake smile. And even I feel it that hypocrisy is not in the higher level, even in the family values. Your cousins, your uncles, your aunts, your everyone, you're all inside your own cousins and kinship hypocrites. Smile on your face, stab at your back. In your jobs, you have a job, a white collar job. You see everyone is hypocrite, pulling your leg and he wants to take the kursi above you. He wants to take something. This, you know, praxis of hegemony or hegemony where they want to go. One is another. He wants to go up. Another wants to go up without a meritocracy. Everyone wants to overshadow another one, supersede another one without a talent without a hypocrisy. This is not the topic. This is what I will discuss in the later videos, how the corruption affects the whole nation. If there is no the value of meritocracy, how it affects the people. This is not the topic today. So Allah punished us with this hypocrisy. Then second thing, this riba, usually we are eating for many years. You have to understand that. Please, the ulamas, the people, the local man, you have to understand that. As long as we do not get rid of this riba, we are engaging war with Allah and his Rasul according to Surah Al-Baqarah. What are we doing? What khair we are looking for? We are under war already. Under war with the creator of heavens and the earth and he is the final, the most beloved prophet. We are under the war. 
and you are talking about baraka, you are talking about khaira. Your ulama says, if there is a riba, it's better to go and die in hunger. Go out of your homes and sleep on the street. Fakr is better than riba. It's not an excuse. We have to cut our administrative costs. costs. We have to cut our leisure costs. If this is the situation we have indulged ourselves, then find alternative solutions. Rather to do haram, Allah says, the shaitan comes to you and make a fear and waswasa of poverty in your hearts. So in return, you may open your woman or do fahsh. Inna Allah la ya'muru bil fahsha. And in opposite, Allah does not command anyone to do fahsh. Immodesty surat chapter number 7 and verse number 23. Surat Al-A'raf, Allah says he does not command. And in Surat Al-Baqarah, Shaitan says, Allah says, do not pay, get terrified with poverty because Shaitan wants you to do immodest act. So he will enjoy looking you. As an immodest person. This is what Quran says. So evaluate yourself. Assess yourself. Do your own homework. Check yourself. Why are we standing here? Because we broke the promise of Allah from the beginning. And we are being suffering. We should follow Islamic principles as we promised that we do it. In our objective resolution, it is written. What was the dream of Muhammad Ali Jinnah? He wants to make Pakistan as the manhaj of Prophet ﷺ, as four guided caliphates. As the system of Medina, the social justice and this uh, system with Medina was having social, political, economic, this was, this was the dream of Muhammad Ali Jinnah to execute these things. But in return, what we get? Nothing. Everything goes opposite. So this is the message to my people in return applies to every Muslim community. If you break the promise of Allah, Allah will put nifaq in you that whatever you do, you will have something feeling in your heart. You will, you have intellectual paralysis. You will be unable to do anything to resolve the problems of the world or on your own problems.